In this lecture, we'll talk about compensation. People generally don't work for free. and How much they get paid for their work is a complicated issue. Um, also, designing a fair compensation plan can be difficult or, or complicated. And it's an important task because the pay and benefits represent a substantial portion of the organization's overall expenses. Designing a fair compensation plan is a difficult task because it involves evaluating, evaluating the worth of all jobs within the business while allowing for individual efforts. Compensation for a specific job is typically determined through a wage salary survey, which tells the company how much compensation comparable firms are paying for specific jobs that the firms have in common. That if you kind of stay with the market, there's less incentive for employees once you've trained them in that job to leave and go work for another firm that is paying a higher wages. Financial compensation falls into two general categories, wages and salaries. Wages are financial rewards based usually on the number of hours the employee works or the level of output that's achieved. Wages based upon the number of hours uh, is called time wages. The federal minimum wage increased to seven dollars and 25 cents per hour in 2009 and there have been some some different wage increases minimum wage increases in various states over the last few years and a continuing trend perhaps in that direction tipped wages must be at least two dollars and 13 cents per hour as long as the tips plus the wage of 213 cents an hour equals the minimum wage of 7.25 per hour the wages are appropriate, time wages are appropriate when employees are continually interrupted and when quality is more important than quantity. Assembly line workers, clerks and maintenance personnel are commonly paid on a time wage basis. The advantage of time wages is the ease in computation. The disadvantage is the time wages provide no incentive for employees to increase their productivity because they're paid for their time. In fact, time wages may encourage employees to be less productive. To offset the disadvantages of time wages, many companies pay on an incentive system using piece wages or commissions. Piece wages are based upon the level of output achieved. A major advantage of piece wages is that they motivate employees to supervise their own activities in order to increase their output. They're paid more if they output more. Skilled craft workers are often paid a piece wage on a piece wage basis. The other incentive system, commissions, pays a fixed amount or a percentage of the employee's sales. This method motivates employees to sell as much as they can. Some companies also combine payment based on commission with time wages or with salaries. A salary is a financial reward calculated on a weekly, monthly, or annual basis. Salaries are associated more generally with white collar workers such as office personnel, executives, professional employees, etc. Although a salary provides a stable stream of income, salaried workers may be required to work beyond the usual hours without additional financial compensation. In addition to the basic wages or, or salaries paid to employees, a company may offer bonuses for exceptional performance or for a exceptional team or company performance as an incentive to increase productivity. Many workers receive bonuses as a thank you or a token of appreciation and support for doing good work and it also is an incentive to continue working hard of course in the hopes of gaining future bonuses another form of compensation is called profit sharing this distributes a percentage of the company's profits to employees whose work helped generate those profits some profit sharing plans involve distributing, distributing shares of company stock to employees, usually referred to as ESOPs or employee stock ownership plans. They have gained, been gaining productivity in recent years. One reason for the popularity of ESOPs is the sense of partnership that they create between the organization and its employees. 
Profit sharing can also motivate employees to work hard because increased productivity in sales could mean the profits of the company or stock dividends will increase and thus their earnings through their ESOPs will be higher. Benefits are another uh, form of compensation. They're a non-financial form of compensation that is provided to employees. This includes things like pension plans for retirement, health, disability, and life insurance. Holidays and paid off for vacation or illness also are considered benefits as are credit union membership, health programs, child care, elder care, assistance with adoption, and all these and many different other types of, uh, of benefits. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, employer costs for employee compensation for civilian workers in the United States averages about $29.63 per hour worked. Wages and salaries account for approximately 70.1% of those costs, while the benefits account for about 29.9% of those costs. Legally, legally required benefits, that is Social Security, Medicare, federal and state, employment insurance, workman's compensation, etc., account for 8.2% of the total compensation. Such benefits increase employee security and to a certain extent, improve their morale and their benefits. A benefit increasingly offered to employees is an employee assistance program or EAP. Each company's EAP is different, but most offer counseling for and assistance with those employee personal problems that might hurt their job performance if they are not addressed. The most common counseling uh, services are offered for drug and alcohol abuse treatment programs fitness programs, smoking cessation clinics, stress management clinics, financial counseling, family counseling, and career counseling. Companies try to provide the benefits they believe their employees want, but diverse people may want different things. In recent years, some single workers have felt that co-workers with spouses and children seem to get special breaks and extra time off to deal with family issues. Some companies use flexible benefits programs to imply, allow employees to choose the benefits they would like up to a specified amount. Fringe benefits include things like sick leave, vacation pay, pension, pl pension plans, health plans, and other extra compensation. Soft benefits include perks that help balance life and work. They include on-site child care, spas, food, service, and even laundry services and hair salons. Cafeteria benefit plans provide a financial amount to employees so they can select specific benefits that, they, that, uh, that fit their needs. That is a cafeteria plan. It's not a cafeteria. It's a, an idea of you go and you select what you want like you would do in a cafeteria. The key is making benefits flexible rather than giving employees identical benefits. Firms, as firms go global, the need for cafeteria style plans or flexible benefit plans can become even more important. Here's an example, on-site fitness program. Uh, people can go after work and work out. Such on-site benefits like these fitness centers or childcare are particularly important for employees who are expected to work long hours and struggle with a healthy work-life balance. Um, in the next lecture, we'll talk a little bit about unionized labor.